Hi guys, welcome back to the UE4 uh, beginner series. And in 2021, we begin by slightly extending our simple AI that we had from last time. So if you remember, we had this cube, which kind of follow us. And then when we get close to it, there's nothing. So how about we extend this just by a little bit so that when we get close to it, it does something. So currently what we have is on the event tick, we built this whole condition, which checks if it's um, far from the player. Else, how about we check that it's close to the player? Less than or equal to, say, 250. And then we can use the, the same sort of uh, vector point difference type thing. So if it's too close, then how about we move it away from the player? So we're going to call the same actor um, local offset thing. But delta location is now going to be the same thing, but um, negated. If you negate the vector, the vector starts pointing in the opposite direction, which just simplifies the whole process. So we can just take this and multiply it by minus one, which is awesome. This makes the whole thing a lot easier. Compile, save, let's check. So if we get close to it, it moves further away from us. If we Yep, goes away and it starts following us if we are further away from it. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to just comment this whole thing. And let's call it um, simple AI. Disconnect that and let's add something else. So what I would like to add is some kind of movement which is based on the tick itself. There's delta seconds which I might be able to use. So essentially I want the cube to start uh, doing circular movements in space uh, along, well, it's depending on how we look at it. So when we start, it looks like this. So if it starts rotating like this, then it's not really moving in the, I want to say Y. Yeah, this is the Y direction, right? Z is up, X is forward, and then Y is to the side. When you keep switching between engines, it's hard to keep track of um, the coordinate systems. So the Y doesn't change. It's only the Z and the X. Okay, let's try that. So I want to set actor location. Is that a thing? Set actor transform location. There we go. Target is self. Uh, event tick is what's going to drive the whole process. So I don't change Y. I change the X and the Z. Let's split up. Can I get a cosine of? Um, let's try radians first. 
using this thing. And then cosine spits a value between minus one and one, right? So how about we multiply it by something? Something like five. I'm just picking uh, random-ish arbitrary values to see what it would look like. So if cosine drives the x, then sine is going to be the um, z. Okay, so it's just one. Fine. Multiply by five, and then this thing gets to z. That looks okay. Let's compile, save, wait. This is set actor location, so this is the absolute position of the actor. We don't want that, right? Because we want to take the world position, the absolute position, and then each frame um, adds something to it. But we don't want to lose the information about the original position. So it needs to be stored somewhere. <clears throat> So I don't think this will work, in which case we need uh, original position. Well, we know what original position is. Let's call it vector, save, compile, and select this thing. Original position is whatever these values are, because that's what it looks like in the editor. Nope. Control C, Control V. Um, yep. These are the original position values, which we are not going to lose now because this never gets overwritten. We're going to use that information. And we're going to add add um, these things to it and then set the actual location. Yeah, this seems more logical. So the new things don't actually get here. Uh, we need to split this. We need to then add whatever comes out of here into here. It's float plus float. Okay, that'll do. So this is the X. And it's this thing that gets into here. And then we need to add another one, which is Z, which goes here. Now this should work because the original position doesn't change. And then we use these things to give us an offset from the original position to then set the absolute position. Let's try this. Okay, where's my cube now? I'm going to move it up so I can see where it is. Um, K sign. <coughs> Set it to just one, this thing to one as well.
can tell if this is the cube that I'm looking at. Yeah, because it wasn't there before. So this thing moves over here for some reason. Oh, is it delta seconds like the delta in between the frame? So it's basically constant-ish. No, I, I, I don't want that. I want time. How do you get time? Never mind, we'll just make our own time. Uh, variables, time of type uh, float. Compile save, default is zero, that's fine. Take that, get time, uh, set time is time delta seconds add this thing goes back to set that so every time this run is going to start this up and then we're going to use time to drive the cosine and sine and then set calls this so basically we use delta seconds to um, drive our time variable, which gets incremented by more or less the same value, which is what we need. I think it is moving now, but it's just ever so slightly. We can't actually see the difference. So we just multiply this by a huge number huge being 100, it's not that huge, but it'll do. Yeah, that's not too bad. So it gives us the rotation, um, sort of circular movement that I wanted. It's a bit slow, so you can increase um, the time variable addition if you want, so that the um, cycle gets faster. What I don't currently see is how it gets from here to there. Oh, because that actually sets the y value. Fair enough, we'll just use the original y. Compile, save. Nice. I keep forgetting that it actually sets all three, even though we haven't changed the Y. So there we have it. We have a circular rotation on um, our cube that we created. And this is how you might add some kind of custom movement um, slash animation to things that you create. It just makes the environment a little bit more dynamic because you don't want things to just appear static as if they don't do anything, in which case you end up with a screenshot rather than actual sort of gameplay type thing. Anyway, in this video, we talked about how to use the event tick to drive our time variable, which gets increased by delta seconds every frame. Based on the time variable, we obtain cosine and sine uh, values, which we then multiply to scale them up. We use the original position of the actor to then use uh, with the offsets that we calculated to then set the actual position in each frame thus creating this animation of circular movement. And the circular movement is obtained by, you know, using cosine and sine. You can use completely different um, functions and then you're going to end up with a different animation, like uh, the butterfly curve animation, which is, like, uh, which is something I quite like. It is can, um, 
It can be created with the same setup as well. Just use the time to uh, use it as a parametric equation in your um, X and Y calculation. Though X and Y in this setup are actually X and Z because Y is the um, axis that we decided not to change. But you know, just experiment with it. That's the whole point of the process, seeing how it all works. Right, I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.